To Star Wars fans who haven't watched The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, Darth Maul was a simple villain just made for one fight scene and to service the plot of The Phantom Menace. However, to those fans who have watched both animated shows, they know that Darth Maul is one of the most interesting and deep characters in the entire franchise, and today I'm going to explain why I believe that he is one of, if not the best, villains and by extension, explain why his arc is also amazing. Savage Press, a fellow Dathomir male, is ordered to go and find Darth Maul, who is still alive on a junk planet. After searching, Savage finds his brother as an utterly broken warrior who is unstable and confused. Maul has gone absolutely insane, and all he remembers are the teachings that he was taught by the Sith and Obi-Wan Kenobi, the man who ruined his life. After Maul's stability is restored by Mother Towson, his goal is to torture Obi-Wan and make him feel the pain that he has gone through. Throughout his six episodes over season four and five, his entire motivation is to get revenge on Obi-Wan. He attempts to build up a criminal empire, but is betrayed by Hondu and his pirates, and nearly dies in the process, leaving him with one destroyed robotic leg and Savage with an arm chopped off. Whilst floating in space, they are discovered by the Mandalorians, including Pre Vizsla, and team up to take over every other criminal empire. They slaughter the Black Sun leaders by beheading all of them in one awesome move. They invade the Hut clan and gain their help after battling some bounty hunters. I will get onto the action scenes later. The Pikes then bow down to Maul and Vizsla before they are invaded, which means that Maul now has four small armies on his side, and goes to invade Mandalore. After they take over by swaying the public toward the Death Watch's movement, causing Pre Vizsla to become the Prime Minister of Mandalore, Maul then challenges Vizsla for the throne and wins, ending with Pre Vizsla being beheaded, which similarly to Umbara shows how mature this show is. Once Maul rises to his highest, he baits Obi-Wan into coming to Mandalore and then captures him and murders Duchess Satine. Obi-Wan's secret lover, right in front of him, all with a maniacal smile on his face. He savours watching Kenobi in pain, and doesn't kill him whilst he has the chance, not because he is an idiot, but because he would prefer to watch him suffer, which makes him hateable, but also very enjoyable to watch. Then, to end his main arc, Palpatine, the man who ordered him to be taken as a child, who turned him into the monster he is, who left him to die, returns, and Savage and Maul duel him and get badly destroyed, ending in Savage's death. In this moment when Savage is killed, you see genuine emotion in Maul's eyes. He is actually sad that his new brother has been murdered in front of him. This makes him strangely sympathetic and made me root for him, showing that he's a great, morally grey character. Now that I have gone over the plot of his arc and his character, I want to talk about the incredible action scenes in his first arc. Pre Vizsla vs Maul is very well choreographed and intense. It shows Vizsla using every weapon in his arsenal, including a flamethrower, a jetpack, a shuriken shooter and the darksaber. It is an awesome display as Vizsla gets more and more desperate whilst Maul stays in control the entire fight. Another excellent duel in this arc is the battle with Savage and Maul versus Palpatine. Throughout most of this arc, I'd say, Maul is in control, and very confident. However, it is obvious as soon as he senses his master, he is filled with dread and is terrified, which comes back in the last arc. This is barely a duel, it's just a full-on beatdown, as Palpatine quickly tears through them and separates them, killing Savage while staring in Maul's eyes and smiling, exactly the same as what he did to Obi-Wan. What brilliant writing. Then Maul attempts to 1v1 his old master, but is wrecked and electrocuted, making him pathetically beg for his life. There are many more great set pieces in this arc, such as the New Mandalorians versus Death Watch, that run side by side with Palpatine's duels. I have only gone through the first half of his arc, so I will cover what he is like in the final season of Clone Wars and his entire story in Rebels, including his death, next video, 
and decide whether he is the best Star Wars villain. I have only gone through the first half of his arc, so I will cover what he is like in the final season of Clone Wars and his entire story in Rebels, including his death, next video and decide whether he is the best Star Wars villain.